the breaking of every stronghold, the breaking of every soul tie. We thank you for the breaking. We thank you for the breaking. No power of the enemy. No stronghold of the enemy. Whatever have the power to hold its grip. We thank you for the breaking. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. Your resurrecting power. Your resurrecting power. Your mighty strong power. Your delivering power. Your redemptive power. Your restoring power. Your healing power. Your healing power. Your delivering power. Your saving power. Your saving power. Your saving power. If it had not been for the mercy of Jesus. If it had not been for the grace of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. We thank you for coming to see about us. We thank you for hearing every single prayer. We thank you for seeing on the inside. We thank you for healing from the inside out. We thank you for changing from the inside out. We thank you for your power. Somebody ought to bless the name of Jesus. We command the kingdom of God to be made manifest in the bodies of your creation. We trust you to manifest as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We release the kingdom of God into the emotions of the sons and daughters. We loose the lordship of Jesus Christ into the nervous system of every believer at every place that this sound of intercession is lifted. We calibrate that place for miracles, signs, and wonders. We take authority over the latitude and the longitude of every place that this sound of worship and prayer will be played. Father, blow Wonderful thing.
Father God, for giving up your only begotten Son for us, Jesus Christ, the man who died for us, who white, who tied, who paid the price for the sins, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. And so we give honor and today unto the name of Jesus Christ. We exalt you today, Lord Jesus. We magnify your holy name today. Your word declares, if Jesus, you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. And so today, we exalt you today, Jesus. We confess you as Lord. We acknowledge you as Master. We acknowledge you as Savior. We acknowledge you as Redeemer. We acknowledge you as the author and the finisher of our faith. The day springs on high, the bishop of our soul, the lover of our soul. And we even now, Father, today take refuge into you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you told us in your word that the righteous run in and they are safe. And so, Father, today as we exalt your name today, Lord Jesus, we even now thank you today that your people are running, Father God. They are running, Lord God. Even now, Father God, into your house, Lord God. They are running, Lord God. Even now, Father God, from the feet, Father God, that have kept them bound, even though God in their mess, Lord. We thank you today, Lord God, even now that your loving kindness is being released through God throughout the airways, Father God, and that it is drawing, Lord God, all me and Lord God, unto you, Lord God. We thank you today, Father, for this day and this hour, Father, of salvation, Lord God. This day and hour, Lord God, with the gospel, Lord God, the good news, the glad tidings, Father God, are being released unto your people today, Father, where it will locate them, Father, right where they're at, Lord God. We thank you today, Father, that the gospel of the good news, Father God, it breaks, Father, condemnation, Father, of your people, Father, that they are no longer bound, Lord God, and even condemned, Lord, in their sins, Lord. For it is written in your word, Lord God, therefore there is now no condemnation, Lord, to those, Lord, that walk not after, oh God, the flesh, but after the spirit. And so, Father, today, we, O oh God, declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the point of the spirit of the Lord is poured out, Father God, even as the gospel of the good dude is being released. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that the ears, Father, of your people are inclined to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And now, Father, today, we pray today, Father, for the hearts of men that would even hear, Father, this broadcast today. We pray that the follow ground of their hearts be broken up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they are able to receive with me to show and grab the word, that restoration, Father, even will come unto them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We can pray today, Father, even now, Lord God, even now that you all me and Father will partake, Father, of your goodness, Lord, today, that will bring them, Father, to a place of repentance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today, Father, even as the good news and the glad tidings is being released, even now throughout the airways, Father God, it brings forth transformation, Lord God, even unto the mindset, so oh God, of your people, where they will no longer conform, oh Lord, to the ways of this world, but they are transformed, Father God, by the glad tidings of the Lord. And we declare today that God loves sinners, Lord, that God loves sinners. Declare today, no longer will the sins of men separate them, Father God, from you, Lord God. But we declare today, Father, that your loving kindness comes upon them now. Your goodness and your mercy, it comes upon them now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, Father, your goodness and your mercy be released even today through the good tidings, the word of the Lord today, Father, that would even know God bring repentance. You said in your word, Father God, that by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And so, Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, Father, that your people will partake, Father, of the word of the Lord. And they will know God know that it is good, Lord. And it will bring them to repentance. And we declare your mercy, Father, in him, O oh God. And it encounters every man today, Father. And that they will no longer be consumed, Lord, in 
love mess, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we release even now the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Even now, Lord, throughout the airways, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that will cause me, Father, to depart, Father God, from evil, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we even now, Father God, loose fire and judgment upon the spirit of doubt and unbelief. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and Father, today, we loose the word of the Lord. Even according to Romans chapter 10 and 9, you said if I believe, oh God, in my heart and confess with my mouth, oh God, the Lord Jesus, and believe that you raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And we declare today, Father, every man, woman, and child that will hear this broadcast today, Father God, that they will believe in their heart and even confess Jesus as Lord. And we declare today that salvation, Lord, it impacts families, Lord God. It impacts the nation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, Father God, that this is an hour of salvation, Father. Even now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and Father, we bless you, and we give you glory and honor today, Father God, for salvation, Father, that has hit, Lord God, even the nation, Lord salvation that has hit households in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, today, we even now, Lord God, lift up our hearts unto you, Lord, and we give you heart, and we give you praise. We give you worship today, Father God. We are those, Father God, that know that you are good and that you are great. We know, Father, that every good thing Lord comes from you and so we praise you right now for your goodness we praise you right now for your love we praise you father for your loving kindness we praise you right now father for everything Lord that good is coming to our life and so father today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we even now father God arrest father God this atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and we loose even now strength oh God even in this atmosphere Jesus Christ, we lose the joy of the Lord in this atmosphere. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you said in your word that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so now, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we release even now, Father God, a spirit of joy, a spirit of celebration, a spirit of God, of high praise, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare and decree, even now, Psalms 18 and 39, that thou hast turned to me, O God, with strength. No, thou hast burdened me with joy, O oh God, unto the battle, unto every enemy be subdued under our feet. And so today, Lord God, we rejoice, O oh God, even now and put the devil on notice that you can no longer steal, you will no longer kill, and you will no longer destroy even our families, our loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that this is an hour of restoration. This is an hour of vindication in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you believe that in your heart, shout hallelujah. Oh, I think you believe it. Shout hallelujah. Oh, Lord, today, we even now, Father God, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we even lose our praise, Father God, right now, even now as a weapon, Father, to kill one Father with the enemies of increase. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, you said in your word, let the people praise thee, then you will bless us, then the earth of God shall increase. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we begin to praise you, Lord God, let the angelic host, Lord God, be released, Father, that deal, Father God, with every restricting spirit, Lord God, every spirit, oh God, that will limit us, Lord, every spirit, Lord God, that will weigh us down, Lord God, and have us, Father God, thank you, oh Lord, in our minds. We strip off, oh God, the spirit of weariness, and we put on the garment of praise today, Lord God. And we use, Lord, our praise, oh God, as a weapon, Lord God, in the midst of our adversity, oh God, in the midst of trials, Lord God. We will praise ye the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But we are, Lord, today, Father God. We follow, oh God, even now the commission, Father God, to walk, Lord God, by faith, Lord God. And not, Lord God, by sight, Lord God. And so, Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today, Father God, even now, Lord, that you have given us, Father God, eyes, oh God, to see in the Spirit. We even declare today that the eyes of your people are anointed with salve, Father, that they will begin, Father God, to see, Father, in the realm 
of the Spirit, that they will begin to see the finished work, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we lose judgment, oh God, upon the spirit of hopelessness now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we lose the word of the Lord, according to Romans 15 and 13, that the God of all hope will fill our hearts with joy and peace and belief. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that your people will rejoice in hope, Lord God. Patient in tribulation and always, Lord, giving praise and honor unto thy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so today, Father God, we rejoice today, oh God. We rejoice today, Lord God. Oh, you better rejoice even in the midst of the battle. If you're going through something, if you believe in God for something, I dare you, and if you got opposition coming up against you, I dare you today to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the Lord has given you the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. I can't just say it, but you got to receive it by faith. The oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. No longer, Lord God, will we be, oh God, be those, oh God, that will function, oh God, as paupers, Lord God. But we declare today that we are the sons of God. We are more than conquerors. And we declare today that our God is for us. And if our God be for us, no devil in hell, fear, sickness, disease, lack, Lord God, depression, Father, it cannot stand against us. So we speak, oh God, to everything, Lord God, every weight, Lord God, that will weigh us down, Father, from elevating, oh God, unto that place where we are seated with Christ Jesus. And we declare today that those chains Oh God, they break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those chains, Father God, they break in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, today, let our praise, Father God, be in the now, Lord God. Begin to open up doors in the realm, oh God, of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, your word declares. Hear me, people of God. All in silence were bound in prison. Bound in prison. And they begin to praise God. And the doors of the prisons were open. The foundation shook and they were free. And so right where you at, begin to give God praise. Even in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your situation, everything that's happening into your life that's contrary to what God has spoken unto you, give God praise for right now. And we declare today, those foundations are broken up. Those doors, oh God, are open. I see double doors opening up for some of you as you begin to praise God. Begin to praise God right where you at. The Lord is here. He inhabited the praises of his people. And so when the Lord comes, as I begin to praise, as we begin to praise you, Lord God, we thank you today that you're coming. And you're dealing, Lord God, with every enemy, Lord God, that will try to wet the saints out, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare and decree today, Father, that we will not get weary and well-doing, Lord God. But we get to declare today that our hearts, Father God, are fixed, trusting in the Lord. You told us to trust in you with all of our hearts, lean out into our own understanding. So, Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we need not on our own understanding. We need not on the reasoning, oh God, that comes, oh God, from the flesh, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this is the day and the hour, Lord, where we believe the report of the Lord. And so, Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray even now in the name of Jesus that the word of the Lord will come forth, oh God, and that it will, oh God, be sown in the hearts of men, Lord God. As that word is sown into our hearts, Father God, that our praise, Father God, begin to water the word of God, and that it will bring forth strength, Father God, that it will bring forth comfort, that it will bring forth faith, hope, oh Lord, and belief, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that no matter the situation, our God is faithful. No matter the circumstances, our God is faithful. It is finished. It is finished. I'm walking out. I'm walking out. 
even though it leaves our even, even though it leaves our hands, we know it never leaves our lives. It never leaves our lives, but it is sown into the spirit, and by the spirit, you're sowing into someone else's life. And so, I need you just to use your spiritual imagination. I need you to get a goal on your mind this morning. I need you to get a heart. I need you to get a family. I need you to get a purpose, and I need you to get a vision on your mind this morning as you prepare your gift. As you prepare your offering, I need you to think about a family that, that is going to be aided by your generosity this, this morning. I need you to think about another ministry that is going to be saved from foreclosure by your giving, by your generosity this morning. I need you to think about a nation. I, think you, I need you to think about an orphanage. I need you to think about those that are in need. People need. There's people right here in this house that need help getting their car repaired. They need help getting groceries in the refrigerator. People of God, let's get a purpose. Let's get a vision. Let's get a heart on our mind. And because of that vision, because of that purpose that is set before us, we'll endure and we'll sacrifice because we have a joy that is set before us. And that joy is, is that we're going to be able to provide for someone else. What a joyous occasion. What a joyous occasion to be able to provide, to add relief and comfort to someone else. Come on, people of God. Come on, we got to grow in our hearts this morning. The Lord is good and he's good to us. And we are that vehicle of goodness. We are that vehicle of aid and relief in the life of someone else. Amen? So those of you that are worshiping live with us, if you need an envelope for your giving, raise your hand. Our ushers and greeters will get one to you. Those of you that are worshiping with us on Facebook and YouTube, and whether you're here with us live or you see this as a rebroadcast, just grab your mobile device and text the word GIVE and be sure to include a dollar amount. The number to text is 231-221-2160. That number again is 231-221-2160. Be sure to text the word GIVE and include a dollar amount. We have other ways that you can give. We'll post them on the screen. We'll post them on your screen if you're watching remotely. God bless you, people of God. Let's remain excited. Let's remain in that place of zeal, knowing that God is good to us. And we, by his grace and by his goodness, have been uh, uh, afforded the opportunity to be generous and good to someone else. God bless you. I woke up this morning just ready to worship him. I find myself just waiting, can't wait to worship him. Deuteronomy 4 and 24 says, our God is a consuming fire. Well, let me tell you, I went through something this week, y'all, and I needed the fire. I understand it even more. It's that fire, the anointing that keeps my mind focused on God. It's the fire that keeps my mouth closed. Hallelujah. It's a fire of God that makes me respond to altercations in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can stand, feel free to. There's liberty in this house. We believe in worshiping the true and mighty, the only God, Yahweh, the consuming fire. Hallelujah. Consuming fire. Who is? I said, our God, the consuming fire. Who is? No one can take your place. No one can take your place. To the top. Our God, the consuming fire. Oh, no other can take your place. The creator of the universe, that's who you are. That's who you are.
just lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, tell him, consuming fire, you are my desire. Come and burn in me. Share this with someone so we can get this message out today. Amen. I believe that you're going to be blessed by the word of the Lord that God has for us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give our, our ministers and our worship team a hand. Amen. For their ministry this morning. Well, we've been talking about um, this war over sin is over. And so, you know, some of you have probably been wondering, you know, why is the apostle talking about, um, you know, sin so much? Because we have a wrong understanding. We have a wrong perception. We think God has a problem with our sin, you know, and God doesn't have a problem with your sin. Amen. That's, that problem has been solved. You know who has a problem with sin? We do. We have a problem with sin. <laughs> God said, your sins have separated you from me. It doesn't, amen, it doesn't separate him from loving us. Amen. I thank God that when we were yet sinners, before we even knew God, God still loved us. Sin has nothing to do with God loving us. Amen. And so I'm, I'm just excited today. We're going to continue that series. Amen. Um, in dealing with this whole subject of the war being over. Amen. I want to just thank God. We have some uh, special guests, amen, that are here this, this morning from Grand Rapids via Africa. Amen. We want to just welcome um, our dear, dear friends. Amen. Um, they are just so, so precious to us. Amen. Brother Stephen and his lovely wife, Sarah. Amen. From Liberia. And then we also want to uh, welcome, amen, our lovely sister, uh, Ruth, amen, and her husband, Stephen. Welcome this morning, amen. Thank you for uh, worshiping with us, amen, and coming. And they brought their lovely children um, uh, with them. A amen, Emmanuel, I'm sorry, amen. Amen. What did, what did I call you? Oh, Stephen, amen, amen, Stephen. Amen, I called both of y'all Stephen. <laughs> amen, Emmanuel. Amen. Just welcome this morning. It's good to see you in uh, the house of the Lord. Everyone knows that uh, my heart is for Africa and, and uh, I love Africa. Uh, we support orphanages in Africa. We have a um, <coughs> also um, it's a sex trafficking slash uh, rehabilitation farm that um, we help to um, oversee with um, our partners. Um, um, the Q Gales, amen, it's called Q Gale uh, Restoration Center in South Africa. And so uh, we had a powerful testimony. We had been praying for them. They had 18 of their people that had been uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID, and they weren't able to go out and earn money. And so we prayed and, and just believed God that God would supernaturally begin to heal them. All 18 of them were miraculously uh, 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 healed. And they were able to go out and earn income. And uh, we sowed seeds into them. Amen. Our church in 
uh, Chicago also sowed seeds, and so uh, they were just testifying because the blessing and the finances that the Lord brought in, they were uh, able to continue. They did not miss a beat, and they had uh, met their budget, and so I'm so excited about that, that we're able to just be a part uh, of of that, and um, it's, it's just just supernatural and miraculous that, you know, things that are taking place. And so, you know, you need to know that your your offerings and your gifts, amen, they're going to change and impact lives, not just in the United States, but also in uh, the nations um, abroad. And so, you know, I love Africa. I love the African continents, and, and God has really given me that, that, that desire. Lately, he's opened up the nations of Asia, and uh, when God prophesied over my life and, and uh, it was um, 1990, um, 1990, he said that I would go to Africa, Asia, Russia, and Europe. And I had been petitioning Lord because I said, God, you know, you haven't opened up the nation of Asia yet. And I was thinking that it was going to be, um, you know, more like China or, you know, God would open up, you know, Korea or something like that. But then I never really, because we don't really think about Pakistan being an Asian nation. Um, but the Lord began to open up doors in India and Pakistan. And so that's that's our Asian connection. Um, some of you have probably been seeing on our Facebook page where we have uh, different churches that I've been working with probably uh, about three years now. We've been helping to provide funding to uh, um, um, a restoration center in India. Um, they've been doing an awesome work. They've been getting uh, which doctors saved, and they've been getting... Um, um, uh, the primary religion over there is Buddhism, and, and they've been converting people, and they travel around on bicycles, and they walk, and they go on scooters, and, and um, you know, we've been helping to provide Bibles and just do an awesome, awesome work um, in um, uh, India. And so in Pakistan, we're believing God, and we're getting ready right now to put together a project um, to actually dig uh, a water well to uh, provide water to uh, a remote village that these people have to literally walk uh, five miles in order to get water, you know, and you thought that you had um, a difficult time, amen, and you thought you were in a difficult situation. How would you like to live in a place where you'd have to walk five miles just to get unclean water, amen, not clean water, unclean water, um, and so we're believing God to be able to uh, work with uh, that church in Pakistan to uh, be able to, to do that, so be excited and know that um, God is doing some awesome things uh, throughout the earth, amen, and through uh, rivers of living water. And I thank God that um, he has given us an awesome church and he's given us awesome leaders, amen? All right, well, let's get into our message today. The subtitle uh, of our message today is going to be, He was pleased to bruise him. Somebody say, God was pleased to bruise him. He was pleased to bruise him. You know, when, you know, I think about this, um, it's interesting because you think about the fact that why would God be pleased to see his son suffer? You know, and when I think about, you know, my children, I know I don't like to see my children suffer at all. The worst thing that you can imagine going through is to see your child suffering or to have your child die or go through something like that is so traumatic. But the scripture says he was pleased to bruise him. That's deep. And we need to really examine that today. We're going to begin to look at this. But the understanding of this is why was he pleased to bruise him? You know, he's not some type of uh, a psychotic, you know, <laughs> a, a, a Satanistic, you know, maniac, meaning that he wanted to just hurt or torture his son. But he was pleased to bruise him, obviously, because he understood what the benefit of that suffering would lead to and what it would actually bring in his life. And so God was pleased to bruise him um, and to see his son go through this suffering. And so we want to look at um, our opening text is going to be Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. And so Jesus never even had a chance to simply go to prison. Jesus never had a fair trial. His trial was unfair. And sometimes, you know, we look at the injustice of the things that we go through. 
you know, and, you know, I can't help but to think about, you know, my son and his situation and the injustice that he has been rendered uh, through the federal government. But I look at the fact that Jesus is giving us a model and an example of how to simply deal with or go through something, you know, and it's amazing the level of understanding and character that Jesus had going through the things that he went through. Look at Isaiah 53 and 7. It says, he, Jesus, was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He didn't say, hey, you got the wrong man. Hey, you know, I didn't do this. Why? He, he never opened his mouth. The Bible says that he, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. You know, and you guys heard me talk about this before. You know, there's, there's something interesting about a lamb that we never really think about, you know, and I always say this, I always use, 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 use this example. I say, you can have, you know, let's say you got a group of lamb and the lambs are in a place and they're sitting there and you grab a lamb and you start slaughtering the lamb and you kill the lamb. The other lambs are just going to be peaceful. They just like, hey, you know, you know, nothing going on. We just chilling. Now you take a, a, a group of pet bulls and you grab one, and then now you cut one, and you slice his neck off. When you go to grab the next one, he's not going to come friendly. <laughs> because he's going to notice that, no, I'm, I'm, no, 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 uh-uh. No, I'm not going where you want to take me. God is illustrating that there is a level of submissiveness and humility that he has placed in the lamb, but Jesus also illustrates this humility because the scripture says that he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? Meaning nobody shall declare his gen generation. Nobody is going to come to a place where they're going to defend him. Nobody is going to come to a place where they have an understanding or step in and say, hey, you got the wrong one. Because the political leaders were against him. The religious leaders were against him. Matter of fact, they teamed up together to propagate his death. And Jesus didn't have any physical descendants to come, the scriptures uh, tells us in Isaiah 53 and 8, it says, For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people were stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. Wow. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was it any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering of sin. Matter of fact, I need to stop right there. How many know what your soul is? Your soul is what? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. So it wasn't like Jesus didn't feel any pain. He agonized mentally. Matter of fact, they talked about this in the garden where he began to agonize through the place of prayer, trying to press into that place of peace where he was prepared and ready. The Bible said he prayed to such a degree that it was as uh, great drops of, of blood began to usher forth out of his uh, pores. His will, meaning that his will was, was, was in a place of, of, of having to know, was this the way that I needed to go? Is this the right time? I don't want to miss this. I can't afford to make a mistake. And emotionally, he experienced everything that we would experience if we were going through something this traumatic. The Bible says, thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, oh glory, there it is. He shall see his seed and shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. See, what the father did is the father saw the seed, he saw the result of what the suffering that Jesus was going through would attribute to and the reward that it would begin to bring forth. The Bible said that Jesus endured the suffering of the cross for the prize that was set before him. He saw something. He saw the finish. He saw the end in mind. 
And this is where we have to have the foresight to look beyond what we're going through today. Because you know what? We're all going through something. Especially coming out of this, you know, COVID and, the, you, know, you know, 2020 and the things that we've gone through and, and, you know, the things that we're dealing with individually and emotionally and psychologically and mentally. Man, we're, we're in a place where everybody's going through something. But the key is not to focus on what you're going through, but what you're going to. What are you going to? Where are you headed? Where, where, where is your end destination? Where is your purpose? Where, where is your goal? See, and that's the problem, that if we don't have that, that end destination, if we don't have that purpose in mind, we're going to be focused and consumed by what we're going through. See, God was pleased to do this because he knew that it would totally solve the problem of sin. See, in the Old Testament, the, the problem with sin wasn't solved, so they began to kill thousands and thousands of rams and bulls and, and goats and doves and, and cows and all different types of stuff were, were slaughtered to try to atone for the sin of the people because the problem couldn't be solved. We couldn't kill enough animals. There couldn't be enough blood shed. And so there was this continuance of sacrificing. But God knew that this blood shedding would be over and the problem would be solved. And this is what I want to share with you today, that the problem that you think that you have with sin is over, it's solved. By his son's suffering, the sin issue would be forever settled, dealt with, and eliminated. And the war would be over. And this is what we're talking about, the fact that the war, the real war is over. We think that we're in a war. We think that we're in a battle, and we're not. It's already finished. When Jesus stretched out his arms and said, it's finished, it's done, he literally meant it was finished, it was done. Everything that we needed was finished, and it was provided for. His seed is, you know, simply everything that, we needed was wrapped up in that seed that actually went into the ground. And we need to understand that we are that seed. That seed is everyone who places their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have faith in the Lord Jesus? Then you are that seed. Galatians 3.29 says it like this, And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. We're not just talking about the natural lineage of Abraham, but we're talking about the spiritual lineage, meaning the spiritual byproduct of Abraham. We're not talking about the fact that, you know, because you're a certain uh, 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 race or because you come from a certain lineage. No, we are the seed of Abraham. We receive the blessings that were promised to Abraham through Christ Jesus. He was the the connection that actually linked us to these blessings. And sometimes, you know, you know, we talk about Jewish people and they're rich and they're blessed and they're this. You know what? You have a better promise and a greater blessing. The problem is, is you struggle with receiving we struggle with being able to receive what God has done and therefore the enemy has convinced us that we need to try to get something that we already have and when you're busy trying to get something that you already have guess what you'll be so consumed that you'll be caught up in the rat race that you'll miss it see the scripture says that God the father was satisfied with uh, the price that Jesus paid for our sins Isaiah 53 and 11 records it like this. He shall see the travail of his soul. That Jesus' soul, not our soul. And he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Now, let me explain something to you. Let me do a definition. We need to look up the word just justify because y'all know I like to look up definitions out of the 
1828, the Webster's 18, 18, um, 28 dictionary. I don't like to use Google because they take out all the God definitions and the God meanings and you know they want to strip it from its original intent. And most people don't know that Webster was a spirit-filled believer and most of his definitions he brought from a biblical perspective. The word justified in a general sense means just as if I had never done it. Just as if I had never sinned. Just, if, if, just as if I had never sinned. So when he justified you, he put you in a situation just as if you had never made the mistake. Now, let me, let me read Webster's 1828. In theology, to pardon and to clear from guilt, to absolve or acquit from guilt, and merited punishment. So meaning, here's, here's the thing that I talked about last week, that when we do something wrong, we're waiting and expecting to be punished. Because you've been taught in the natural world, in the natural sense, that every time you do something wrong, there's a punishment that's coming for, for you. But you need to understand is that you've been justified from the enemy being able to punish you for anything that you've done. Why? Because Christ has paid the price for it. Now, the problem is this, is that if we don't repent... And if we don't remain in that place of righteousness by faith, then yes, the enemy does have access and he has a right to you. This is why we have to walk upright before the Lord and begin to serve God. So if you continue to do wrong and continue to sin and have no regard, of course. Sin is going to have its full work. But the problem of Sin being able to destroy and affect you and impact you has been solved. The only problem is, is what path and what direction do you choose to walk in? What path and direction do you choose to serve? Listen to the remainder of this. It means to acquit from guilt and merited punishment and to accept as righteous on the account of the merits of the Savior. So that means that you're made righteous on the account of what Jesus did. You're made holy on the account of what the merits of what he did. Not your merits, but it's as if you've done it. Because Jesus has made us joint heirs. It's like having a billionaire, amen, and then turning around, you know, and having Jeff Bezos put your name on his account. <laughs> Matter of fact, is that Jeff Bezos right there? Kind of look like Jeff a little bit. Now everybody laughed because he was like, "Man, we can't even imagine having your name on Jeff Bezos' account." You know, it's like when your when your name is on the account. Guess what? You have full access. You can walk in there and make transactions and wire funds and do you know whatever you you want to do. That's what Jesus did. Jesus gave us the leverage. He gave us the equity. <laughs> he gave us everything that he had access to. The Bible says, and to accept as righteous on the account and the merits of the Savior or by the application of Christ's atonement to the offender. Wow. That's powerful. So it's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus did. Are you here? God saw the travail of Jesus and imputed the justification to me just as if I had suffered and paid for my own sins throughout eternity. Now, this is not just once, meaning that you make a mistake and then all of a sudden you, you messed up, but this is an atonement and a forgiveness for sin, past, present, and future. This is an atonement and a forgiveness for sin, past, present, and future. Now, am I giving you a license to sin? Am I saying God doesn't have a problem with your sin? You can just go out and do what you want to do. Amen. You can smoke dope, get high, drink, you know, uh, cuss, 
No, I'm not saying that because the Bible says that shall we continue to sin that grace may abound by no means. We taught last week that as we continue in righteousness and to do the right thing and to make the right choices and to make the right decisions, what happens is all of a sudden the power of sin begins to die and it's diminished in our flesh because sin operates in your flesh. And the Bible says that there's no good thing in your flesh. That's the problem is that we are a spirit being that have a soul and we live in this God, oh my goodness, forsaken flesh. This flesh is good for nothing. The Bible says that it is an enmity against God. Your flesh is an enemy. It fights the very nature of you desiring and want to do right. See, and the problem is, is that the enemy has convinced you that the wrong stuff that you want to do is you and it's not you. Because Paul said, it is no longer I that sin, but it is sin that dwelleth in me and not it dwelleth in you, but it's in your flesh. So in order to be able to defeat this, we have to begin to crucify this flesh and we need to declare war against the flesh. And understand that we're not going to allow the flesh to get out of control and to run and ruin our life. Are you here, church? See, all my sin was placed on Jesus. And all his righteousness was placed on me. Now think about that. All my sin was placed on Jesus. And all his righteousness was placed on me. So we have to have the faith and the ability to know and believe that your sin now was placed on him and have the faith to receive his righteousness. Because the problem is, is you know what? Most days we don't feel we're righteous to it. We don't feel real holy. Most of us. Because we mess up, we make mistakes, we don't do the stuff that we commit to do. You know, we tell God we're going to do this, and, and then, you know, we end up messing up, and then we feel bad, but it has nothing to do with how you feel. Your righteousness has nothing to do with how you feel. It has everything to do with your faith and what you believe. It has everything to do with your belief system. Because the Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. So we need to change the way that you think. In order to change the way that you think, I need to give you an understanding of what you have and what's been given to you. If Jeff Bezos put you on his account, it don't matter that you think that he does. He, he didn't. If he did, he did. Now, if you don't believe in it, receive it, and access it, that's your problem. Jesus put you on the account. Here, Jesus. We're joint heirs with Christ. See, originally we had an account by ourselves, but then when we messed up, Jesus came, took it over, amen, and then now put our name on his his account. So we can't mess it up now. (laughs) He made me just as if I had never sinned. Come on, say that with me. He made me just as if I had never sinned. Some of us need to med- meditate on it. I'm just as if I had never sinned. See, and when the enemy tries to beat you up, tell him, I'm just as if I had never sinned. See, that's the war that we need to fight to remain in that place of holiness and righteousness. Look at Isaiah 53 and 12. It says, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. He said, let the weak say that I'm what? Let the poor say that I'm what? Come on, we learned that in, 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 in uh, Sunday school, didn't we? Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Come on, we, we learned that one. But do we really believe it? Because it can be mentally challenging when you, you know, physically your bank account is, you know, uh, kind of low and, you know, you got bills due and the rents due too. And, you know, baby need a new pair of shoes and, you know, uh, uh, things aren't working out and you need tuition and things, ain't, you know, and you're like, how do you believe that I'm rich? 
See, one of the biggest problems that we have is the ability to be able to speak that which is on, that which is not. Because it's the way that God functions. The Bible said that God speaks those things that are as though they And if that's the way that he speaks, then shouldn't that be the way that we walk around speaking? Not that we're trying to, you know, act like we're something. No, you are. You actually have a right to speak it because it's actually true. But the problem is, is we feel like it's not true. That's where we need to shift our belief system. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many and made intercession for all transgressors. Because of what Jesus did, as recorded in Isaiah 52 and 53, you know what? We ought to be singing. We ought to be singing. You know, Isaiah 54 says it like this. Sing, O barren, thou that didst bear. Break forth into singing and cry loud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married, saith the Lord. It means, hallelujah, you ought to be singing because you didn't have to give birth to the child. But guess what? You get all the benefits. Come on. You didn't have to go through the suffering. Amen. You didn't have to go through the scourging. You didn't have to go through the crucifixion. You didn't have to have your soul to be in agony. But you get to share all the rewards. Come on. You ought to be singing. The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. Why are you more than a conqueror? That means that you get to uh, receive all the benefits. Amen. And never have to go through all the the agony and the suffering. You're more than a conqueror. Because you get the fruit, you get the reward, you get the benefit and never had to fight the fight. It's like Bruce Lee, the art of fighting without fighting. And the devil trying to draw you into a fight and say, I don't have to fight you. My big brother already whooped you. You're defeated. Even waste time with you. <laughs> Understand that through Jesus, you should be expecting nothing but blessings. Nothing but blessings. You know what? And I'm going to be honest. God began to challenge, cha- challenge me. He said, son, what are you expecting? See, most of the time, you're expecting something bad to happen because you're living your life of expectations based upon your works. (laughs) See, but your expectations should be based upon his works. Not what you've done, because what you've done is irrelevant. What you do is irrelevant. You can't do anything good enough, amen. You can't earn the merits, amen, to expect to receive. So you're caught up in a natural understanding, in a natural function, in a natural principle when God is now releasing things from a spiritual perspective. So your expectation should be based upon what Christ has done. Nothing but blessings. I'm blessed. Everything my hands touch is blessed. That's what Abraham and and Isaac believed. They believe that everything that they touched was blessed. When they go and they work for an employer, the employer is blessed. Why? Because you are there. Whoever you connect to are blessed because you are blessing. The blessings of Abraham is upon you. See, you've got to begin to expect blessings. You've got to begin to expect, amen, favor. You've got to begin to expect, amen, to walk in that place of victory, to walk in healing, to walk in deliverance, to walk in that place of dominion. What are you expecting? Somebody shout, what are we expecting? What are you expecting? You're expecting to be punished. Are you expecting defeat? Are you expecting, amen, things not to turn around? Are you expecting things not to change? But the truth of the matter is, it is done. It is finished. We should be expecting nothing but blessings. Oh, my goodness. 
let me share this with you. Isaiah 54, 2 and 3. This is, this is going to bless you right here. I'm almost done. Isaiah 54 and 2 says it like this. It says, enlarge the places of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and stretch thy stakes for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left hand and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be in habitation. The Lord says, enlarge your pent tent pegs. Increase your vision. See, we think too small. We think too small. Enlarge your vision. You want to become an employee, and God says, I've called you to be the employer. Some of us are missing our blessing because we're not at the level of expectation where God is providing for us. We're looking for provision down here in the grass when God is saying, I've given you provision on a higher level. Are you here, people of God? See, I had to learn that lesson. I had to learn that lesson. Because I was a hard-headed young, young man. You know, couldn't nobody tell, tell me nothing. You know, I had went to college on a full rise foot, football scholarship and was full of myself and was thinking I'm going to do it my way. Y'all know, I'm going to do it my way. And then somebody said, how's that working for you? Lost it all, found myself in jail trying to make money selling dope while I was in college. Ignorant, dumb. Blew a professional career, messed up millions of dollars. Trying to do it my way. Trying to serve and do something that I thought was the right way. But had I had an understanding, had I known what I had, I never would have made that mistake. And what some of us have to do is we have to break away from the patterns of how we're functioning and how we're operating and really begin to look and examine ourselves and say, what am I doing, where am I going, and what is the end destination of this journey that I'm on? Because it was leading to destruction. It was not the path that I wanted, but it was the path that I was on. And I'm here to tell you today, people of God. I'm here to tell you today. God is saying, increase your expectations. Enlarge your tent pegs. Some of us, I'm going to be, be honest, most of us just don't think big enough. There is something about expecting something huge. I remember I was talking to a guy one day, and he was like, you know, I don't really want, you know, to have much. I don't really want, I don't care to have, you know, money or, you know, you know, this and that and the other thing. And I said, you know what, that's selfish. He was like, well, what do you mean? I said, because God never said you have to spend it on yourself. What about God using you as being a conduit and a blessing to impact and change the world? It's not just about you. It's about what does God want to do through you. It's great that you don't want that, but what, what does God want? Because most of the times the people that really don't want it are the ones that God is trying to get it to. <laughs> because he knows that you don't want it and you'll release it. And then you turn around and operate in pride and ignorance on the opposite hand, and you don't even embrace what God has for you. And I'm here today to tell you that God has something so much bigger than what we're expecting. The Bible says it like this. I desire to do abundantly above that that you even think or imagine. That's where God's expectation is. And he's provided that for us. He's given us that. If we really understood this thing, man, we would not be depressed or discouraged. If we understood, uh, really, how much, you know, God simply loved you and has really forgiven us. 
but we keep beating ourselves up. Every time we make a mistake, every time we miss it, and then we turn around and we feel like God's angry with us and God doesn't, you know, he's not with us. And he's, where did we get this from? We got it from some dysfunctional understanding in our, you know, uh, child parent relationship when we were growing up because our parents weren't good parents. Our fathers weren't good fathers. Our mothers weren't good mothers. And now we come to God and God says, I'm a good God. I'm a God of mercy. I'm a God, even though you messed up and you miss it, I still bless you anyway. Because of what Jesus has done, not because of what you have done. He's the God that when he saw, amen, the religious leaders, amen, getting ready to stone the prostitute, he came to the prostitute's demise and said, let him that, that, that is without sin cast the first stone. He defended her. God is not trying, he's not angry with you. He wasn't angry with the prostitute. He defended her. And then when he was done, he told her, go and sin no more. Because he wanted and knew that I had something better for you, daughter, than what you were doing. See, we think and we believe that God has a problem with our sin because you have a problem with your sin. When God has already solved that problem and he's made a way of escape from it. And you don't have to live a life that is bound by sin. You don't have to live a life that is bound by addiction, whether it's drug addiction or addiction to pills, or addiction to some type of narcotic or addiction to, to put pornography or addiction to whatever it is that we might be addicted to that's hindering us from being able to serve God and yield and surrender our heart to him. That if we truly come to him and we say, God, help me, Take this away from me. He will deliver you. He will set you free. Because anything that's obstructing you from coming to him, he will remove it. If your desire is him, he will remove it. He is the God that leaves the 99 and he goes for you. If we really understood how God loved us, the price that he has paid for this relationship with us. Philippians 1 and 21 says it like this. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live meaning is Christ. If we really begin to live, when you really begin to live, you're going to begin to come in and experience Christ in a new dynamic way. And when you really begin to understand death is when you really begin to walk into that place where now you begin to understand your eternal destiny. That you live forever. That to die is gain. Meaning that when I die, I am moving to a place of eternity. Death has no power. It has no sting over me. It can't hurt me. It can only launch me to the next level of advancement. <laughs> it's like playing a video game. All of a sudden, blah, 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 you get next level of advancement. <laughs> but to die and you're not right with Christ and you're not living with Christ, you're going to spend eternity in hell where there's torment and torture and fire and brimstone. And I know you don't hear much about this today because preachers don't want to talk about hell and say that there is a hell, but there is a consequence for rejecting Christ. There it is. You got it, didn't you, Elder? You don't go to hell for sin. Let me, let me, let me tell you that. You don't go to hell for sinning. I'm going to say that third time. You do not go to hell for sinning. Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. You go to hell for rejecting Christ. What sin does is sin causes you to have a lack of appetite and desire for Christ. See, when we just yield to sin, what happens is the more you sin, the less you want 
to have that relationship with Christ, the less you want to serve Christ, the less you want to uh, come to church, the less you want to read your Bible, the less you want to talk about God and the things of God and be around people of God. Why? Because I'm consumed with sin. This is why the enemy is deceiving people. And I want to say this today. This is, the, this is the deception that is causing communities of those that are dealing with gender issues to fall into this trap of rejecting Christ. Because if I now accept and believe that sin is okay, it is not sin, if I call evil good and I embrace it and then I try to say, okay, this is not sin, God is okay with it, I'm in a place of deception. And I've rejected Christ. I've rejected what he represents. Because God is holy. Let us not call the profane holy. That which is detestable. Let us not call it holy and call it righteousness. And this is what the enemy does. is He deceives people into now embracing sin and saying that God's okay with this. God's good with this. God doesn't have a problem with this. No, he died for sin. So that we could be free from it. So that it would have no power over us. And people say, well, God would never, you know, loving God would never send anybody to hell. You're right. He does not send anybody to hell. You make that own choice. We make that decision ourself, whether we choose to embrace him and everything that he stands for, the righteousness, the truth, the character, the integrity, the morals. This is what's happening in our schools and in our community and in our society today, that the deterioration of moral character is being stripped. It is being now torn out of our schools it is now being ripped out of our churches. Let me say that as well. On behalf of what we call freedom. Freedom. But understand, anything outside of Christ is not freedom, it's bondage. Freedom. People say, well, I'm free to choose and... You know, make this choice. No, it's bondage. I'm free if I have a child on the inside of me and I want to abort this child. No, that's murder. It's my body and I should be able to do what I want to do with it. No, it's not your body. The Bible says, do you not know that your body belongs to God? It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And you don't have the choice to make a decision to take that life. But under the auspices of freedom, we're being told that that's okay. We don't have the right to gripe and complain and, and, and moan and murmur. You know, we ought to be planning to break forth on the left, break forth on the, on the right expectations for nothing but blessings. If you take nothing from my message today, take from this message today that God ain't got nothing for you but blessings. See, but the world will tell you, the world is trying to convince you that, you know, they'll say things like even the insurance company, well, we're going to insure you against an act of God, right? Like God's killing people. Like God's causing tsunamis and earthquakes, and, you know, hur hurricane, like, you know, and then the first thing that we say when we really don't have an understanding is, God, why did you take this? Why did you take my child? God, why did you take my mother? Why did you take my brother? Why? And God is like, I didn't do it. I give you life and that more abundantly. God is saying, I've given you all blessings <laughs> in Christ Jesus. He has nothing but blessings for us. He has nothing but blessings for us. God is not punishing you. He is not angry with you. 
And you must get this in your understanding so that you can begin to receive because we can't receive if we feel unworthy. Paul even said it. He said, there is now therefore no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Meaning, stop condemning yourself. Stop beating yourself up. And begin to receive the blessings of your inheritance. Hallelujah. Come on, just bow your head as I pray for you today. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we bless your people today. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the revelation of the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. Lord, we understand that you're not angry with us. You're not mad with us. That you have given us a solution. There are some that are here today. And I say to you that if you were to die today, you do not know where you would spend eternity. If that's you and you want to know and you want to make that decision, you want to give your life back to the Lord or give your life to the Lord the first time, I want you to just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to bring you down here in front. I just want you to raise your hand and we acknowledge you. I see that hand. Is there one more? I see that hand. I see that hand back there. Amen. I see that hand. Those of you on Facebook, right there. God knows he sees your hand. I don't have to see it. Just, just raise it. I'm talking to you as well. I want you to pray this prayer with me if you raise your hand. Everyone, I want you to just pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, you said in your word that it's as easy as ABC, that if I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and believe that you died on the cross for my sins and confess my sins that I would be saved. <coughs> so Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I invite you and ask you to come into my heart. Give me your Holy Spirit. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I confess that I am a sinner and I, and I receive salvation today. I thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Lord, help me to build this relationship with you. Connect me with people and connect me with resources that will strengthen me. I commit to declare war against my flesh and to build my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give, give the Lord a hand for those who made that decision. Amen today, if you made that decision today. That is so awesome. I really feel like this message has to be ministered to to us so that we can truly receive because so many of us are struggling with sin and sin is not an issue with the Father. I want to say this, you are dismissed. If there's someone here today and you want prayer uh, specifically uh, for something um, that we did not pray for, we will be here at the altar after service. Feel free to come up and we will have our leaders here to pray for you. God bless you. We love you and we will see you next week. Amen. Have an awesome, awesome week.